iCloud is great and I use it every single day to manage all the files that I use personally. Now there is a caveat here. When I'm working with my team, because my team, I use, some are using Windows, some are using Mac, I prefer to use our company's Google Drive. That's just so much easier when you're cross collaborating against different tools. However, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, iCloud Drive is something that's worth getting to know a little better. Now, I suspect a reason why many people have a hate relationship with iCloud Drive is simply because it doesn't work like a drive normally does. It's certainly very different from Dropbox, perhaps Google Drive, or even Microsoft's OneDrive. What, micro what Apple's iCloud Drive does is it kind of acts as a secondary hard drive for your devices. Now it depends on how much space you have. I actually pay for the top tier, so I think I've got a two terabytes of space in my iCloud, but that's because it's on family sharing and my wife constantly is taking photos of our dog. Therefore, I need a lot of space. But the great thing about iCloud Drive is it's actually wonderfully editable on your MacBook and that crosses over to both your phone and your iPad. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far and you want to learn how to bring your whole life into an organized state, then check out my Time and Life Mastery program. It's packed full of techniques you can follow along with me at home and you can find it in the description box below. And if you use the coupon code COD is great, then you can get 50% off when you join. So one of the great things about iCloud Drive is you can actually organize it in many different ways. However, since Apple have updated their operating systems for 2026, it has actually brought something that I find really helpful. And that is color coding your folders. Now, the only way to do this though is you do need to start using tags. And there is a problem there. Whenever we start tagging things, people tend to go crazy and start adding 30, 40, 50, hundreds of different tags. Well, when you get to that point, tags just become useless because there's no way you can remember all your tags. So what I want to do is I want to show you how I'm using the tags and therefore the color coding system in Mac OS 26. Now this actually does cuts across to your iPhone and your iPad if you're using files on those devices. So if you look at my screen right now, you can see that up at the top I have orange, which relates to CPI. CPI is my productivity business. Then you'll see red, which is for my FES, which is my English language business, which is very small part of what I do. And then I have my personal. Now personal is blue because blue is my favorite color, you may have noticed. And then underneath that is no tags. Now no tags are for all the apps that have connection to my iCloud. So if you can see here, uh, keynote pages, preview numbers, documents, desktop. Desktop refers to this Mac itself, which is great if I take a screenshot and then suddenly I have to rush out and I've only got my phone with me. That screenshot is now available through Apple Files when I go into the desktop folder. As you can see though, there's nothing on my screen right now, nothing on my desktop now. And so there's a lot of stuff just there and these are apps that I may have on my phone or actually may have had on my phone. For instance, I noticed was one here, Obsidian, that was from when I was playing with Obsidian and looking at it, it was created in 2021. So I was playing around with Obsidian in 2021 and obviously by the 2022, I decided that I'm not going to be using it because its last modified was in 2022. But what happened is Obsidian, when I set it up, put the folder into my iCloud Drive. The great thing is though, any notes that I created in Obsidian is now there. 
Anyway, going back to how you organize iCloud Drive. Now, as you can see up at the top, I have my CPI, and that's very important. That's very important to me because that is the main part, that is my main business, and therefore everything goes in there. Now, if you look in here, for example, podcast, if I open that up, podcast generally has all my podcast images, but it's also got every single episode in there. Because it's iCloud Drive, I've got, as I mentioned, two terabytes of stuff, so it doesn't matter. I can hold that in there, and it's only holding, each audio file is only holding 22, 23, it's less than 25 megabytes of space. But at the end of the year, if it starts getting full, I can move off to an external hard drive. So that's what I have in there. Now, I'm guessing you're wondering how has he put these in this order where orange is at the top, then red, and then blue. Well, there's a little secret, which of course I am going to share with you right now. Okay, so let's go back into my iCloud Drive, and what we need to do is, first of all, we need to look at the tags because maybe you've already played around with it and never really fulfilled it. So if you go into all tags, uh, that will bring up your tags, but it doesn't. That's the problem uh, I found. So we go back to iCloud Drive. What we have to do is we have to go into Finder and we go into Finder Settings. And from there, you've got General and then you've got Tags. Now, Tags is where you want to actually go. Now, I've got my three most tags there, orange, red, and blue. And I can change the color of these, by the way, just by clicking on the drop-down menu from there. Now, you don't get an opportunity to customize your colors. You do have to use what Apple give you, which is, if I'm looking at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors that you can choose from. But that should be enough for what you're doing. So you can turn your tags on and off by just checking the box. Now you've got one, I've got one down here called gray and I'm trying to get rid of that, but it won't go away. Now I can right click on that and it will give me the option to delete the tag. I'm gonna hit that. It's gonna say, do you want to remove seven items? So I should point out, it won't delete the items. It just removes the tag from the items. If I click delete, nothing happens. So I don't know what's happening there. That might be a bug in Apple's system. Now, the other thing is you can actually go in, again, if you right click, you can rename these tags and you can do pretty much anything else you want. But this is the first step. So the first step is to go into Finder and set, Finder settings and then go to tag and you will find all your tags there. Now, most of them you can delete, but you might find there's one or two that don't seem to want to delete. And as I say, I think that's a bug in Apple's system, but there we go. But I have I remember when tagging first came out on Apple computers and in iCloud Drive, I do remember setting up hundreds of tags, well, probably 20, 30, and it was just ridiculous because it then meant nothing to me. So I'm keeping this absolutely clean and tight and it means something to me. Now it's up to you how you use your tags. Okay, so once we've done that, we can bring back the finder, the finder window, and what we can then do, now you go up into the three dots up at the top here. These are the three dots next to the tag, edit tags, go to the three dots, tap on that, and click on use groups. Now that's gonna put everything into a group, and then you need to decide, or at least you need to choose what your groupings are. So if you're gonna be using the tags like I do, you go into there and go down and make sure that tags is checked. So that means now that, by the way, if I show you just, if I go by name, what will happen is everything just gets mixed up and messed up, as you can see from there. If I go back to the three dots and just a group by tag, it gives me the tags that I want. Now, here's another little trick because if we go into back into our finder oops we go back into finder set <laughs> we go back into finder settings and what you can do with these tags is you can move them around so you can move the order so whatever order these are in that is how they will show up in your finder window and i just think that is superb because it does mean that you can now 
organize your folder by the type of work that you do. Now, I know this is not necessarily for everyone. Many of you, if you're working for a company, may have no choice, but you have to use Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive. And that's fine, that's your work life. But in your personal life, if you're using iCloud Drive and you want to get the most out of it, here's one way to get it organized. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this acts as like a, a hard drive to whatever device you're using. So you can actually set it up so that everything is up into the cloud. And as you can see here, this little window here, this little icon here, means that most of what's on this folder is already in the cloud. Now, whenever I'm using my laptop, I'm always going to be connected to Wi-Fi because I very rarely take my iPad out of the office. I might go into the home with it, but again, I've got Wi-Fi. Or I'm in a hotel and I've also I've got Wi-Fi. So the thing about this is I'm always going to be connected to the iCloud drive. If not, I can get it from my phone or my iPad whenever I'm traveling around. So I've got access pretty much all the time to whatever I've got in my iCloud. Now it's great because as I say, I've got all sorts of stuff in here. Now just to give you an example of what I keep in here, because I know people will be curious, is let's just take my CPI 2025. So I organize everything by uh, the particular types of things that I will be uh, needing throughout the year. So I've got down here logos, campaigns, uh, resources, accounts, quotations and invoices whenever I do a quote for a company or have to send an invoice. I've got all my expenses are kept in here. Uh, this is just a project that I might be working on later this year, but more likely next year. Uh, every time somebody buys something from my website using PayPal, I have to pay a fee. So that goes, all the, the receipts for that goes in there because I need to keep a track of it. And then I've got my images. Now my images uh, the, the thumbnails that I use and I do that by month. So they all goes in here by month. So this is one of the ways that I just absolutely love using iCloud. Once it's set up, it's like I don't need to mess around with it anymore. It's all organized for me and it's on every device almost instantaneously, which makes life so much easier for me when I'm moving around or traveling. It's just one of those little things that Apple does that does it very well. However, if you are comparing it to the way a traditional drive, cloud drive works like Dropbox or Google Drive or Microsoft One, uh, OneDrive, then you are probably going to get very frustrated because it doesn't work like that. It works in a very different way. Now you'll notice that if I go back into here, for instance, my coaching uh, folder here is showing with these icons of people. That is because that folder is shared with my demo computer, which is here in the studio, which means that when I'm doing my coaching calls every day, I have access to all the feedback on the coaching that I've done with whatever client I'm doing. And also I share, uh, I did, uh, yep, I share this one as well, which is stuff that I need to share to the demo computer. And I've shared that computer, uh, that folder with my other computer, which is connected to a different account. It's my demo computer after all. So there you go. That's something that I wanted to share with you this week is just because everyone's talking about all the other stuff that's going on in Apple's updated systems, but I just absolutely love iCal Drive. It's one of those tools that Apple uses that I've just found just works seamlessly and has never really let me down. And as I mentioned previously, all of this is accessible on my phone and my iPad wherever I go and it's almost instantaneously uploaded to the cloud. So then I have it when I'm in the car, when I'm out in a coffee shop with just my iPad or even just my phone. If I need something from iCloud, it's always with me. And that is what, to me, a, 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 a drive in the cloud should be all about. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to learn more about how I organize my files, I think this video up here will be the one to watch next.